Coming up on Techzilla, is BlackBerry's new smartphone an iPhone killer? Should you dump cable for WiMAX? What to do with that old netbook? And 3D gaming joy, Lloyd Case is back with a roundup of GPUs. So scoop up the vanilla ice cream and pour on the blueberries, because Techzilla starts now. This episode of Techzilla is made possible by the United States Air Force, Squarespace, and Netflix. Go to netflix.com slash techzilla to get your free trial membership. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. That's Veronica Guns Belmont. That's Veronica Guns. Look at my guns. Check I'm doing it out, Push-ups every morning. Because mm -hmm. being into technology <laughs> doesn't mean you should be fat and lazy. I was just tired of being like a 120-pound weakling. I want to be a 120 pound ass kicker. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when you watch kick ass one too many times. <laughs> and welcome to Techzilla, hands on reviews of the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or the most charming use of quinoa yet, we've got an answer for you. It's all about the quinoa hush puppies. Ooh. This is a barbecue place, my new town. Horrible barbecue, amazing quinoa hush puppies. I like hush puppies. Yes, I do. Or you do. We do. We, we both do. Hey, you know what? Speaking of, of uh, maybe I'm reading it wrong, mm -hmm. right? If you say, so last week it's Google and Verizon and private talks to violate net neutrality. Well, Monday this week, Google and Verizon announced a net neutrality accord. Seven core principles they hope will guide Congress. And uh, also, by the way, as part of the principles is that net neutrality doesn't really need to apply to wireless internet. Boy, I bet Comcast is thrilled about that. Both uh, companies were firm in believing the FCC should play watchdog over a set of rules brought together by Congress with the ability to hammer $2 million fines for wireline providers that violate the rules. Yes, the yes. two companies did agree that wireless providers should be transparent about how they're shaping your packets. So if they decide to, say, crush slingbox traffic, wireless providers should be upfront about it. Uh, the core message of this announcement, though, was that Google shouting from the rooftops that they weren't cutting a special deal for prioritized traffic on Verizon's networks. Phew. Yeah, no, they, they were... Uh, it's not as nefarious as everyone thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, the, not as nefarious. They, they were just agreeing that wireless providers shouldn't get different, actually should get different rules from wireline providers. Wireline should be totally open and neutral, and that it's okay to offer special managed services, special priority traffic if it's not on the public internet. I wouldn't get too worried yet. I mean, yeah. the, the one group of people that are going to be really teed off by this whole thing are BitTorrenters. <laughs> like, that's definitely the group that's still going to be a little bit worked up about it because there are going to be a lot of things about uh, regulating, like, legal and illegal packets right. and that kind of stuff. So that's going to still be a little bit dicey on that side. Well, so, I don't know. I can say, as, as somebody who who's pretty much living on, on my mm -hmm. phone and being really frustrated by some of the restrictions. No files over 20, 20 megabytes. No this, no that. I, I actually would like some, I, I get it. There's wireless is scarcer than, than wireline and, and, and you know, whatever. It's mm -hmm. just, I, I would like to see, it's kind of funny that like, you know, hi, we're a big wireless provider. And we're Google. We think wired providers should do this. I mean, it's, it seems like this is all about getting out in front of Congress before Congress mm -hmm. sits down and actually makes up rules for net neutrality. I think you're probably right. So, speaking of which, how about a wireless <laughs> internet question? Carlos in Houston writes in, WiMAX has been advertising a lot here in Houston. According to my map, I'm supposed to have good coverage. But if it's anything like AT&T's 3G coverage, that might not be very good. I feel your pain, Carlos. So how fast is WiMAX? I've got a 12 megabit per second cable internet with Comcast right now. Is it worth switching? I should mention that I'm a gamer. I play games like WoW Online. Thanks for your help. Love your show. Thanks, Carlos, in right. Houston. Yeah, well, Clearwire, the company that provides Clear, is pretty much the only provider of WiMAX in the U.S. Yeah. Houston, if memory serves, was the 28th city that Clear brought online. Mm. They're in almost 70 cities now, and they all use 4G on their website. They've got the yeah, whole Clear's 4G. Yeah, Clear's like all about, we're 4G, we're faster than that, even right. though, I mean, 4G is a marketing term. Yeah, 
for, for now. Uh, how <laughs> fast does Clear run? Well, the website claims average speeds of 3 to 6 megabits per second and bursts of over 10 megabits per second. Um, from what we've read online from sites like DSLreports.com, the speeds vary considerably by time of day. Lots of users are sharing a tower just like 3G and also affected seasonally. Yeah, it's pretty funny, right? It appears that summer foliage, the leaves come out and Clear slows down in some areas. That's, <laughs> That's really interesting. Because people are That's like, totally, I, yeah, it I, makes sense. I get this during the winter, I get this during the summer. Mm -hmm. Folks kind of either love or hate WiMAX. Clear doesn't offer modems that use external antennas, and I hear the signal can be tray fickle if you're at the edge of a tower footprint. Yeah. So you hear about people going like, well, I got two bars when I pulled it out of the house, or if I turned it 90 degrees, everything changed. So there's, there's it's so many different factors, though. Too many different factors. Yeah. All of this is pretty moot, uh, given the fact that you're a gamer. Clear users typically report 100 to 150 millisecond ping times on a good day, and 200 to 300 milliseconds on bad ones. Not so good for gaming, especially if you're doing some like first-person shooters like Call of Duty or <laughs> Why something. Why do I keep where getting shot? Every ping counts. Every yeah. little millisecond counts in your lag time. If you have lag, you're dead. Uh, you know, when I'm playing WoW, I, I typically... In, in a good scenario, I'm getting about 60 milliseconds. Okay. In a bad scenario, like in a big city or something, I'm averaging like around 100. If I'm getting over 150, I might as well just not even bother. At <laughs> I just well lay your gold down. I mean, I've seen it go it. up to 400 on sometimes, but I don't know what's causing that. That's like a really bad server lag, something right. terrible going wrong, or like big city, like everyone's crowding into to, into <laughs> Iron Forge. Not that I know about Iron Forge because I don't why play we Alliance. Don't, we should you know all have to about. pay for our World of Warcraft. Prioritized alliance. No. No, wait. Prioritized packets. Horde. Horde. <laughs> Don't say the word alliance around me. Anyway. Alliance. Yeah. So you have to you have to watch those ping times when you're when you're online gaming because it can be very detrimental to your health of you your really character at least. Get that whole like questionable content .net, like angry like you're a member of the alliance scum kind of thing. Oh, I'm very horde. I'm very dedicated to the horde. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. I don't associate with those alliance folks. Oh well. Sorry. World of Warcraft people, <laughs> I'm watch get out. Hate mail now. This could be you. Awesome. Still to come, Lloyd Case is joining us with a big fat roundup of some big fast graphics cards. Right now, though, let's thank one of our sponsors, the United States Air Force. Sir, debris heading towards our comm satellite. Impact may cut off communications with ground forces. Launch avoidance maneuver. Twenty kilometers in closing. Collision averted, sir. All objects are accounted for. Good job. Learn more at airforce.com. Summer is raging, which is the perfect time to fire up the AC, your gaming PC, and get your obsessive gaming on. Unless, of course, your GPU ain't hanging with your favorite new games. Our man in the hardware trenches, Lloyd Case, has been working on a roundup of high-end graphics cards. Lloyd, what's looking good these days? $200 and up, right? That's what we're right. looking at here? Yep, yep. And I, I've been doing actually an SLI roundup, which are an SLI and Crossfire, which is two cards in the system. But we can talk about one card at a time here. We have some exciting, actually, you have some exciting news about sort of SLI and Crossfire. But we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Should, should we start with the AMD stuff or yep. the NVIDIA Let's stuff? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. So first thing up is this guy. This is a... Radeon HD 5830. Uh, the difference is it's got XFX's custom cooler on it. Uh, about $230. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really hang in well with a lot of the other cards in that price range now. Really? Um, Falling off the trailing edge. Yeah, it's kind of a weird. It was kind of a weird GPU part. AMD kind of took their high-end ones that were kind of broken. The chips were, weren't fully <laughs> functional and turned it into a budget card. So it's not. I'll take care of that. Doesn't really keep up with uh, some of the newer cards, but you know. How about the Radeon HD 5850? The 5850 is still a pretty good deal. It's around $300, $330. Um, the, cool, the great thing about this, I was about to say cool thing, which is actually true also, is that these guys are very power efficient. Mm -hmm. So when you're idling, which is most of the time when you're not gaming, it's only using about 15 to 20 watts. That's pretty good. What are yeah. you seeing at the high end for the, the gaming cards? What, what's the worst case scenario for a gaming card these worst days? Worst case scenario is like a 40 GTX, an NVIDIA GTX 40 with an SLI mode that'll That'll eat up uh, about probably 700 watts. That's your system power is 700 watts or more. And at idle? Idle probably. Well, the the Fermi, the original Fermi chip was pretty warm even in idle. It's probably sitting there at 100, at 200 watts to, to 300 watts. Sucking down more power than your CPU. Yep. Yeah. HIS Radeon HD 5870 Modern Warfare Edition. Yeah. Turbo Edition. Right, right, right. It's got it's got a little custom cooler on it. 
a um, little different fan. It's over, factory overclocked. I don't remember the specs, but both memory and the core are, are overclocked. So it's faster than your normal Radeon. It's also more expensive. It's about $440. Um, but cheaper than the 480 GTX. I mean, these things all priced sort of in a, like a ladder, right? Mm -hmm. So, so if you get a if you get this card, it's going to be cheaper than a 40 GT, GTX 480, but not as expensive. I mean, not as fast. So. Would you rather have the factory overclock it, or would you rather overclock it yourself? I'd rather have the factory do it because then you get the warranty. <laughs> That's a good thing. And the top of the end is still the Sapphire Radeon 18 right. 5870. Right. This is a two gig card. It is not overclocked. It's okay. got but two gigs of RAM. But what its claim to fame is, it's got the six mini Display Ports. So if you want to have <laughs> Six monitors, or four monitors, or five monitors. I saw one guy with a racing setup, right? He's right, right. this car racing. He's got five monitors and a surround kind of setup. So basically, you can look over and see who he's passing. That's and right. Get the full experience. It's I really like into that it. thought. Yeah. For the 5870, is it, is it pretty much? I, I know that the sort of the number of card vendors has been is cut down a bunch. Is right. Sapphire pretty much the premier vendor? Sapphire or? XFX mm -hmm. XFX has a really good warranty. Mm -hmm. and they're a little more expensive though. But you figure that a standard Radeon 5870 is probably around 380 dollars now. That's still pretty expensive. Yeah. Nvidia having a really good six months to a year. Year right at the bottom end, Asus GeForce DTX 460 TOP. Yeah, this is a 768 megabyte card. The reason now that they have two versions of the GTX 460, mm -hmm. uh, Nvidia does. One supports 768 meg of memory. It also has a what's a narrower memory pipe, so it's got 192 bit wide memory pipe, and uh, all the other features are the same though. So it's got the same number of texture units, same number of uh, graphics processors, a little bit. Is 768 megabytes going to be enough for next year's games? It'll be fine if you don't do a lot of anti-aliasing. Okay. This card scales up pretty darn well in SLI mode. You, and uh, even if you do anti-aliasing, especially if you're running on like the newer 1080p monitors mm -hmm. that most people are having these days, I wouldn't put this on a 2560 by 1600 display. Uh, but, but for 1920 by 1080, it's cool. Yeah. It'll be fine. Gigabyte GeForce GTX 460. That's this guy. Now this is also factory overclocked. Uh, I forget again the, the specifics, but it's uh, on their website. Two fans, their own custom cooler. Unlike the original Fermi cards, NVIDIA is allowing the guys to make, the card makers to make their own cards. And it's probably a good thing. <laughs> yep, yep. And, you know, he, dual heat pipes, all that kind of good stuff. This is a nice little card. In SLI mode, it's, it's actually 1920 by 1200 is a nice resolution for this guy. I like that thought. The PNY GeForce GTX 465. Yeah. Now, this card is kind of the odd man out in NVIDIA side. Again, this is sort of... Uh, a Fermi chip that's been cut down uh, in the sense of it's got a lot of stuff disabled on it. Um, doesn't have as many ROPs, for example, if I recall correctly, as the 460. Uh, so in some certain kinds of very texture intensive games, it may actually be slower. It's got more um, graphics processing units, though, so it's, oh, a little, so it's a little faster in the GPU related stuff. Um, about this, maybe about twenty or thirty dollars more than the four sixty. Any sort of noticeable performance difference between the four sixty? No, it's a give and take thing. In fact, it's pretty close. It's a little faster, but it's so much. The difference is small. <laughs> Minute. Right. Galaxy. And this generates a lot more heat. So think about that. That's a bad thought. The guy, this car, this like case design fascinates me with the flip up. Like Ryan Trout from PC Per, right. I was on a podcast with him, and, and he was like flipping the fan up and going. That's right. This fan. I'm not going to try and do it here, but yeah, you can. Uh, maybe can. Oh, go for it. Yep. <laughs> I'm not sure why this does this. I mean, I, guess I think it, it's for cleaning. Yeah, maybe that's it. Um, it is kind of a cool looking card. It's one of the few custom designs of the 470 that, mm -hmm. that are out there. Um, pretty nice little card, though. It's fast or factory overclocked. This particular one is. Um, again, like all of the, full, of the original Fermi chips, it runs pretty hot and sucks a lot of power when it's running. How about the EVGA GTX 480 super clocked with high flow bracket and back plate? Now, if you're going to run an air cooled card, not right. go to liquid cooling, this is about as fast as it gets. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of things it does. Um, it's got the, when I say high flow bracket, it's got bigger holes in it and you can move more air without generating a lot more noise, a little more noise. And it's got this back plate over the, over the thing which helps cool the memory a little bit. Basically a giant hunk of aluminum. Right. So it comes already factory overclocked, but you can probably push it a little harder yourself if you want to do that. A nice little card. Out of uh, all these pricey, though. This is like a $530 card. That's a pretty scary thought. So if you were buying, if you had to get as close to $200 as possible, which of these cards would you roll with? Right now, uh, my favorite two cards are the, are the two uh, GTX 460s. Not just because they're lower cost, but because they're very power efficient. Mm -hmm. um, I'm holding up the right GTX 460s. Yep, those are the two. And, uh, you know, the 768 megabyte. They're both actually about the same price. Asus pushes their card a little faster, a little harder in the overclocking side, but... But uh, because the, the, uh, the wider memory pipe, the, the gigabyte card is just about as fast. How about at the high end? What's your number? Like, if, if money is no object, 
Actually, if money is no object, it might be time to go. The, okay, this this is the thing that has me excited. Like traditionally, it's like SLI crossfire, like a fifty percent right. gain is huge. Like right. I put two, I, I bought two cards, and it's like I'm running at one hundred and fifty percent of one card. Like with the four sixties and the four seventies, you're seeing like ninety percent scaling, like two right. cards mm -hmm. almost being twice as fast. Right. What's going on with that? Well, they just they just have a lot of compute horsepower. They can throw the problem, and their drivers have gotten better. Uh, you know, Dwight Dirksen's software team has done a lot of work. Um, AT AMD has done a lot better too. Their crossfire has been not quite keeping up, doesn't scale as well, but it's a lot better than it used to be, supports more games and things like that. So, so, so at this point, for the ultimate graphics performance, are we talking like two 480s, two 470s, two 460s, yeah, or what you are you the You've got to sort of say, what, what are you trying to accomplish? So okay. two 480s would be really fast, right? right. Uh, you better have a kilowatt power supply. <laughs> so I'm running two 470s right now mm -hmm. in my system uh, with a 750 watt power supply and never overheats. That's a good thing. Um, but the other thing is, is but again, if you want just if you want really fast mm -hmm. GTX 480, if you want things like a bunch of monitors, like I also can drive three monitors with one graphics card, which is what I do. Uh, that's why I have an AMD card. But I have in one of the game, a couple of the gaming rigs in my basement. I've got AM, uh, NVIDIA gear, and it's really fast. So it seems like for raw speed, you're going to go with like a pair of NVIDIA cards right. and SLI. Mm -hmm. Money is no object. Raw speed for more finesse. Uh, ATI and the, and the Radeon right. side, the advantage. But I got to say that the new four, GTX 460s on the budget side, SLI, two of those, 230 no, each, so four, $460. Let's say you're And up. you can run these with a reasonable power supply. Could, could I buy one now and then maybe one in you know six months or a year yep. when the price cuts down? Mm -hmm. Excellent. That sounds like a good way to get my gaming machine back up to speed because my 4870 is looking a little long in the teeth Because with point. 80 to 90% scaling, you actually get your money's worth. I like that thought. That's a good thing. Do you have time for one more GPU question? Sure. Actually, we should point out, th is this showing up in MaximumPC.com next week? Yeah, it's going to be on MaximumPC.com. Uh, I'm turning it in next week, so mm -hmm. it'll probably be up by the end of the week. Good to know. Quick GPU question from Justin. He says, I'm a design student looking to build my own workstation for CAD programs and rendering, Rhino, HyperShot, SolidWorks, some photo editing. The labs at his school use NVIDIA Quattro 380s hooked up to 21-inch Wacoms. He's confused as what the difference is between a rendering card and a gaming card. He was wondering, should he get a specialized rendering card or is it okay with a gaming card for his system? And his, his budget's $1,200 Canadian, right. including the monitor, which is definitely, because yeah. that's like a, half the cost of, of a lot of the professional cards he's, out there. He's, that squeezing, I've seen. he's squeezing his system uh, budget pretty tightly. But, you know, the really, the differences are going to be for what he's doing, mm -hmm. not huge. What a professional graphics card gives you is double sided rendering as opposed to one sided rendering. So it just takes a little longer to do the rendering. Mm -hmm. And then it'll give you accelerated line drawing for pure CAD, like AutoCAD type stuff. And, uh, you know, again, and the drivers are. The, what you're really paying for is the, the drivers and the qualification that all the companies do to make sure everything runs bug free. Um, so I would say that for what he needs, he can get a gaming card and just do fine. <laughs> that and that would, means he could actually afford to build a system. That's actually, that's, that's, that's a big difference. Would you say, he also said for $1,200, should he just buy an iMac? <laughs> Not for what Core two there. duos and, a, and an older graphics card. I don't know. SolidWorks run, run on the Mac. I haven't kept up with that stuff. You know what? We're gonna let Justin look that one up. <laughs> but I, I'm thinking like a $600 PC with a faster GPU, $800. Plus he's got to get a monitor. Yeah, uh, I think I think he can do pretty well though. I mean, $1,200 PC, that'll have, that can have a core, an entry-level Core i7 now. I like that thought. 24-inch monitor, Dell Outlet is your friend if that works in Canada. Good luck, Justin. Lloyd, thank you so much, dude. My pleasure. What's the website? MaximumPC.com, and I, my blog is on ImprobableInsights.com. Find me on Facebook and Twitter at Lloyd Case. Ladies and gentlemen, check the man out. Good, good stuff up at the website. Coming up next, well, we got viewer questions for you to wrap the show. But first, 3D gaming in a notebook. Roger Chang, disappointed or enthusiastic? Stay tuned to find out. Right now, though, it's time to thank one of our sponsors, Squarespace. It's a publishing system. It's a hosting system. You want to build a blog, portfolio, any kind of website. Squarespace makes it easy. They got blogging tools that let you update your blog on the go from your iPhone, hassle-free importing sites from other environments. So if you want to move to Squarespace, they make it easy. Good, fat, robust stats and quite a bit more. Squarespace makes it easy for anybody to build and maintain a site that you could only dream of on other platforms unless you wanted to shell out the big dollars. And if you have coding experience, Squarespace lets you get under the hood, into the code and customize things as much as you want. Tens of thousands of people across the internet have been using Squarespace for years and their already great service is only getting better. 
Why? Well, on July 14th, Squarespace announced a huge round of capital investment that will allow them to expand at an even faster rate and provide even better service. We want to congratulate Squarespace, and we are very excited to continue working with such great people. Do me a favor, head over to squarespace.com. You can score a 14-day free trial, and if you decide to buy into Squarespace, use the promo code TECHZILLA when placing your order. You'll get 10% off for the lifetime of your account. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, RDO. RDO, pronounced R-D-O, a combination of radio and audio, is a new way to experience music online. This subscription service will let you stream high quality songs from artists from the biggest music labels like EMI, Sony, Universal and Warner Music as well as a collection of indie labels. There are several different ways to listen to your music from RDO. Either listen on the web, which is where you'll probably spend the most time adding music or creating playlists, use their Adobe Air desktop application or on iPhone or Blackberry using their apps. An Android app is on the way too. For $9.99 a month, you can stream all your tunes to the desktop app and mobile, and for $4.99, you can access our entire library on the web only. If you want permanent copies of the songs you're hearing, you'll be able to download them for a pretty competitive price at around $1.30. If you've already got a huge collection of music on iTunes, but still want to stream it on RDO and add those songs to your playlists, you can use the desktop app to match songs with the library of music on RDO, automatically adding all those artists to your collection on the site. There are tons of different music services out there, but RDO seems to be one of the most promising. Heck, I even put my eMusic subscription on hold for three months so I could try this one out. Check it out at RDO.com. With all the talk about iPhone this and Android that, it's easy to forget that RIM's BlackBerry is still a major player in the mobile market. To counter Apple's iPhone 4 and the latest iterations of Google's Android phones, RIM has released the BlackBerry Torch 9800. Here to give his impressions is resident BlackBerry 9700 user and, of course, our producer, Roger. Hey. Hey, so how's it going? It goes well. Now, as you, everyone knows in the office, at least, I'm like one of the, actually, I'm the only BlackBerry user in the <laughs> office, I think, other than one of the uh, sales guys who mm -hmm. comes in like once a month. Uh, and I was really excited about the Torch because this is obviously the next iteration in the BlackBerry uh, line. And uh, it, it is a very unique phone. Number one, it's, it has a touch screen. And it's not that crappy touch screen from, from the Storm line. This is actually a, a capacitance touch phone, um, much like you would find on an Android or, or an iPhone. What about haptic feedback? Is there any, so, any feeling when you push the button down? None, none. none. It's, 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 it, there, there's, there might be, but I haven't found it. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to assume, I'm going to say no. Uh, it is also, as you know, it's a slider phone. So if you if you still need the the BlackBerry keyboard, you have it. Mm -hmm. um, but it also supports the landscape. What do you find you use more, the landscape mode virtual keyboard or the slider actual tactile? I keyboard? still use the slider keyboard because I'm so used to that style. Mm -hmm. Now it feels a little bit different because it's 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 a depression, so it feels right. almost kind of concave as opposed to the convex style of the uh, traditional BlackBerry, I should say. Now, the thing is that if you want to, you can probably go all keyboard. Now, there are a couple of functions that you still need the buttons for, and that's why I like it using a landscape, because it puts the buttons near my left thumb, gotcha. or right thumb, or whatever, whichever thumb you want to use, instead of trying to hold it this way and then reach down after you touch something uh, on the screen. And how does it feel in comparison to your older BlackBerry? It's definitely heavier, and it's definitely bulkier. Now, I'm going to put this uh, compared to side to size. As you can see, this is the this is my 9700, mm -hmm. and this is the 9800, and it's just a little bit bigger dimensions-wise, but weight, you can feel it. So if you put in a coat pocket or something, you'll, you'll definitely notice it more than, say, the 9700. The response is, is pretty pretty snappy. Now, the thing is they went with the same, pro or the same processor as mm. the, the 9700, so don't expect huge blazing uh, performance increases because you're not going to find it. Uh, but it does, does what it needs to do pretty well, except and this has always been an Achilles heel of the BlackBerry, and that's been the browser. So, you know, if you're looking for something that to, to surf the web on when you're at the airport or in the coffee shop, this probably isn't it because you'll be really frustrated if you're used to the iPhone or to the, uh, the Google Android phones when it comes to, to web browsing. Besides the obvious hardware differences, what are some of the changes in the software? So, PC Mag, Sasha Seagan really enjoyed the integration of the social networking <laughs> apps with the BlackBerry OS, which I might add is at number six. So, this is one generation ahead of the old 9700 uh, mm -hmm. OS at five. Now, the cool thing is that whenever you get a message within 
uh, Twitter, MySpace, or, or what have you, it would go into your, your common messaging uh, oh, nice. box in, in the BlackBerry OS. It's like one uh, integrated inbox. Yeah, pretty much. What they've done is they've taken the BlackBerry and they've added a few new features that people have been clamming for, including, the, of course, the touchscreen, the landscape modes, and stuff like that. Overall, will you be updating? Still on the fence. I I really like, okay, so one of the reasons why I like BlackBerry over all the competing smartphones right now is battery life. Now, with the 9700, I could get about six hours and, and 48 minutes, so almost seven hours worth of, of talk time. With this, you're down to four hours and 36 minutes. So if you're, if you're you know, one of those people that really needs a consistently powered up phone so you can make those important calls, messages, and all that, you know, you might be, you might feel a little constrained by this. But if you're really, you know, into making sure that you get all the latest touch features, mm -hmm. uh, including, of course, the multi-touch, where you can uh, uh, pull up a page and do the multi-tap and all that, it's pretty cool. But you know, I like the battery life. This is small and it doesn't really weigh as much as this phone, so it, it, it does everything I need it to do. Yeah. Excellent. I make, but you know, I would strongly recommend if someone wants, you know, a lot of these features to so check this out, play with it. And it might, you might. Find it to your liking. I mean, Sasha liked it. He gave it four out of five. Not bad. So that's a that's pretty that's a pretty high uh, um, thumbs up from from him. Now, uh, what's this guy here? It's it's Toshiba's brand new 3D gaming laptop. Y yes. So this is Toshiba's uh, A665. It's a satellite A665 3D. Now people are wondering 3D gaming. So how's that any different than other gaming laptops on the market? It's, it's 3D. It's not just 3D. It's <laughs> it's it's 3D. It's serious guy 3D. Yeah, this essentially has uh, a bundle of the uh, NVIDIA 3D vision support in it. Mm -hmm. So that includes the graphics, or not the graphics, the glasses, the little uh, dongle that goes with it, and of course the driver and, and all that kind of uh, cleared away on the machine. So out of the box, it should work. Nice. Now, when, when, one, of the cool, one of the really nice things about it is to support 3D, of course, you need a very fast screen. So this is one, actually one of the few, this is actually the only laptop I know that has a 120 hertz screen in order to do the... And that's good for crazy action and, and fast sequences and yes, stuff. Yes, and, it, and, it, and you need it for the 3D, you know, right. 60 one eye, 60 the other eye. Uh, but beyond that, the screen is actually pretty good looking. I watched a, I watched a movie, actually I watched Kick-Ass on it, and, uh, and now that really bad Ben Stiller movie, I can't remember. Uh, but it, it looked good even though it was a bad movie. Um, and I was amazed because I was expecting, you know, hey, it's a run of the mill, you know, let's throw it at Best Buy and mm -hmm. we'll throw in a bunch of, you know, little dinky uh, um, add ons in order to kind of up the price, which is $1,600, by the way, in order to get people to buy it. But overall, I was very pleasantly surprised. The, um, the, the, the video quality was there and the gaming performance is there. So it has a Core i7 740. Uh, it does 1.73 standard, but it will auto uh, overclock up to 2.93 oh, gigahertz. Great. Cool. So if you need it, you have the boost there now. It's a four core, two threads per core, so you get eight thread support. Uh, has four gigs of RAM. The screen is kind of on the low resolution side, 1366 by 768, uh, so you get 720p, but it does have HDMI out, so if you want, you can plug it into a full screen like Plasma or uh, uh, LCD. You but know, you wouldn't be able to enjoy the 3D. Yes, that that's 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 kind of the hitch. Now, for gaming performance in straight 2D without the 3D enabled, uh, I got roughly 61 frames per second in Left 4 Dead 2 with all the eye candy on without the anti without the anti-aliasing turned on. Mm -hmm. Now that dropped down to 37 frames per second uh, with uh, the, the 8X uh, multi-sampling multi -sampling, anti-aliasing turned on. But that is just as good as my, actually it's a few frames better than my desktop uh, Quad 66, uh, 6600 at home. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that speaks a lot. I mean, the, the GPU, it's I think it's a 340, 370M uh, mobile part. And you know what, uh, it does the job, it's a one gigabyte. Uh, GPU. Now, does the performance go way down when you turn on the 3D yes, when you're no, gaming? No, that's the flip side. Once you enable 3D, it has to make two images for the for, for the 3D effect. So the guys over at Firing Squad uh, tested it out, and they noticed, on average, a roughly 40 frame per second difference between when Ouch. you were running a game uh, with 3D and with it disabled. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you're, you're going to be playing, you know, some balls to the walls first person shooter and you want all these frames per second like no other, skip the uh, 3D f portion of it. Do you get any of that muddiness when you're looking at the 3D or any of the, like, the loss of the brightness on the screen? Yes, you do. So one of the things is because these are LCD shutters, 
that, that necessarily need to block the light, um, you can expect maybe at least half drop in, 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 in brightness. Wow. So if you're playing a game that has some pretty dark scenes with it, you might want to jack up the gamma or the brightness because it will get pretty dark. And how about battery life? I got about four hours, 10 minutes, a little over four hour, ten, uh, four hour 10 minutes. That's not gaming, that's just that's regular not gaming. web browsing. That was just email. web browsing and that was with the power saver uh, uh, setting in the power uh, control in Windows 7. Gotcha. So, you know, bottom line, in terms of 3D performance, it does deliver. It does the 3D gaming and it works well. It does uh, 3D Blu-ray, it does that well. Now, now the thing is not all games are designed for 3D, even mm -hmm. 3D games like, for example, StarCraft II, the game you love so much, gave me a splitting migraine playing Ouch. with it. In fact, I, I thought it was me, gave it to three other people, had the exa exact same experience. It was not a game designed not for good. this, for these glasses. Games, however, designed for it, like uh, Battlefield uh, Bad, Bad Company 2, mm -hmm. worked amazing. Left 4 Dead is considered ranked high up there, even though it wasn't designed specifically for this uh, feature works pretty well. They do have a list, so if you want to go through and check out what games do and do not work, of course, it does have to be 3D based. Uh, if you're playing like uh, Plants vs. Zombies, I don't think you'll get too much of a Z, uh, 3D effect. Blu-ray is there. I was watching you know, the, uh, the Blu-ray test demo disc. Uh, Everyone enjoyed it, everyone liked it. Even NVIDIA's Envision uh, 3D videos that they have available for download as tests work pretty well. Uh, I will say this. It's because of these glasses. Uh, people with, with who do need corrective lenses, it, it doesn't fit very well. Yeah. And for extended period of time, certain people, including me, cannot wear these because it actually gives me a slight headache. So bottom line, is it worth the money? Uh, $1,600, I don't know. It's $400 over an average gaming laptop. It's well built. Uh, the performance is there, the graphics is there. You do get Blu-ray, you do a high-end quad-core, uh, Core i7 processor. Um, the 3 is, I think, a personal decision. Not everyone will be jumping on, it's like, oh, it's the next thing in gaming. Other people think it's, it's the second coming. Um, you know, it's one of the things you have to test out. I, I think the laptop is, is, you know, is worth the price, but whether or not you want to pay the price for, for stuff like this is up to the up to that person. Well, I may be taking this home to test out just to be on the safe side. StarCraft 2, give right you a headache. Head. Exactly. All right, well, coming up next, we've got some more viewer questions, but first, it's time to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. With more than 15 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, instantly streaming TV episodes and movies over the internet and sending DVDs by mail. For $8.99 a month, Netflix members can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies, stream to their TVs and computers, and can receive unlimited DVDs delivered quickly to their homes. With Netflix, there are never any due dates or late fees. Members can select from a growing library of titles that can be watched instantly and a vast array of titles on DVD. Among the large and expanding number of devices streaming TV episodes and movies are Microsoft's Xbox 360, Sony's PS3 game console, and the Nintendo Wii console. Find movies you love easily. As a Netflix Unlimited member, you get DVDs by mail in about one business day. Watch as many movies as you want. Shipping is free and there are no late fees or due dates. As a new member and a Texilla viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Go to Netflix.com slash Texilla and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so they know that we sent you. Jason and Joe both wrote in with a suggestion for Blair from Burlington, who was having issues with Windows Live, logging him into his messenger chat every time he went to check Hotmail. Irritating. They both said when logged into Hotmail, your username on the right side will contain a green icon signifying you're logged into Messenger. Right click on the box and select Sign Off Messenger. Simple enough. Blair, if all the suggestions we made last week don't work, give that last one a shot as well. And make sure you've dumped those cookies, too. Dump your cookies weekly, if Dump not daily. Dump those cookies. Dump those cookies. That it's just... too bad because they're so delicious, but, you know, you have to do it sometimes. <laughs> I'll eat the cookies then. And Kyle wrote in to ask us what he should be doing with his infrequently used netbook. Oh, nothing ages more poorly than a netbook. He says, I got an 11-inch Acer last year, but I don't use it anymore. I have a desktop I use primarily and now have my new Droid X for my mobile browsing. The netbook has a pretty good setup for a netbook. <laughs> Windows 7 Ultimate Office upgraded to 2 gigabytes of memory and 1.33 gigahertz processor. So what to do with my netbook? I don't want to sell it, so I'm trying to think of alternate uses for it. Any ideas, Kyle in Fairfax? Yeah, I think a lot of people are having a similar conundrum right now. <laughs> I know I am. I haven't touched my netbook in like months. Luckily, you have some options. Um, experiment with other operating systems like Linux, for example. Jolie Cloud mm. has just come out with their 1.0 version, and it's a great operating system for netbooks. 
networks. The Acer can also be Hackintoshed, but you may have some Wi-Fi hardware issues with that. Well, then you just get to open up the Acer and plop in a new Wi-Fi yeah. PCI card. You know, if you can find it, if it has, it's weird. Some netbooks have it, if they don't, if there's an extra PCI Express slot inside there, you can get one of the Broadcom Crystal HD cards and turn it into a mobile media, like HD media server. Oh, nice. Which is pretty cool. I love using small netbooks, actually, or notebooks. You can connect them to an external hard drive, use it as a cheap source of storage for your totally. network. Totally. You can also turn it into a music streaming device by installing, like, Airfoil on it from Rogue Amoeba. It's a really mm -hmm. great one. Just hook yeah. up some speakers, and you can stream your music collection all over your home through Wi-Fi. Um, our friend Fee on FriendFeed gave the suggestion of using your netbook as a second monitor using MaxiVista. Oh. That's at MaxiVista.com. Uh, the software is almost $40, though, so if you want to try something similar <laughs> to that, check out Zone Screen. It appears to be free. I, I looked around the website a little bit and couldn't find a price. Or, um, we'll assume it's free for now. <laughs> we'll assume it's free. Or Screen Recycler for Mac, which is $29.90. Even though it's for Mac, you can still use a PC machine as that second monitor, so you won't have to change anything on the netbook. If anyone out there has any other suggestions for Kyle, let us know at Texilla at revision3.com. Our last note of the day comes from Twitter user Don't Look, who says about our custom iPad iPhone charger ideas from last week, it doesn't sound very practical after reading this because of the data connections needed for charging and sync. And then he points us to a Tua article about reverse engineering Apple chargers and what it takes to create your own. To that we say, who cares about practical? We like yeah. building stuff. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's about getting <laughs> what you want. And if what you want is a charging cable for the iPad, I say, Take Lady Ada's inspiration, get your soldering iron on, and make it happen. We like making things. Yeah. We like making things that are specifically tailored to exactly what we want. We haven't made anything in a while. We I need know. To make we need to get on the making things. Okay. Sorry about that. Next week. <laughs> For everybody watching, well, apparently we'll be making something next week, so I better get my lab set up in get the new house. We live on your questions, so email us. Textil at revision3.com. Tech help, product reviews, how to's, and apparently DIY. You ask us, we'll do it. But we need your emails, people, so don't be shy. Send them into techzilla at revision3.com. Even better, send us in a video question. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of all your friends and family when they see your mug on our show. Mm -hmm. Just keep it to 15 seconds, upload it to YouTube, and send us a link in an email with video question in the subject line. And as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. Share your thoughts, ideas, or comments with other fans of the show. Do us a favor, be sure to follow us at Twitter at twitter.com slash techzilla and YouTube at youtube.com slash techhd. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Until next time, you've been watching Techzilla. Are you ready? I've, I've been ready. I'm just waiting for you to. You might want to wait until I'm actually looking at the camera to start counting it. Trace dose. Jason and Joe both threw it in. I might, might add, this is the next duration of the Google, or not Google OS. Actually, re asset because they just said <laughs> Google twice. We are showing the first BlackBerry phone to run the Android operating system. <laughs> So beside the hardware changes, what are some of the differences with the software? So PC Sasha Segan uh, really enjoyed uh, the... PC what? You said PC Sasha, Sasha Segan. Segan. Is PC? Last time's a charm. Three, two. And he really enjoyed the integration of the social networking apps with the Google... Uh, <laughs> God. One, one last time. Last, one last time. time. No, no, don't distract him. Don't distract him. Ow. We gotta bang it out. Exactly what he Okay. Three, two.